Hey, this is Kirk. And this is Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show. Thanks for watching us, guys. We have two of the best football players in the state of Virginia, and specifically uh, this region and this county. And that is Prince William County's very own T.J. Bush and Mark Arena. They are outstanding football players for Freedom High School, where Jay Golson, the godfather of Prince William County Sports, is the public announcer for the games. Um, so thanks, guys, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So I, I, I just want to start off just so people know, Freedom High School is right now 5-0, and um, without a doubt, one of the better teams in their district and region. It, but it again, I said it one more time, the last five part. and oh, and some people would say they're not just the best team in this region, probably Northern probably Virginia, the best team in the entire state, or oh, and, and definitely Northern Virginia, definitely Northern Virginia. I don't so see anybody else close. We, I, I, I've had a chance to see you guys play, and TJ, I've known you for a couple of years now. I uh, used to play with my son. Um, uh, back in the day, but so anyway, let's go. Let's just find out a little bit more about these two guys. Uh, go ahead, Kirk, if you want to start out with a couple of questions. I'll start out with a statement. Um, all right, we're gonna have a lot of young people. You guys can subscribe, and you won't. Nobody will see who you subscribe to, and you won't get any notifications. So, and we know the younger people actually watch podcasts, whereas the older people we don't. So. But uh, subscribe to us, the Kirk and Bird Show on YouTube, and then Twitter. Uh, we're doing pretty good there. We don't put out a ton of stuff, but it's at the Kirk and Bird B Y R D. So, um, Mark and TJ, like Rusty said, you're five and zero. Oh. Um, now, one of the things that we make sure we don't do as parents is lead you into you know anything. So, um, you're five and zero. Oh. You got a big game this weekend. We're not going to ask anything because we want to make sure you don't say anything wrong and give them any bulletin board material. But the trajectory for your team looks very good, and it's an impressive 5-0 and record. Um, you've got good wins, uh, a big win over two-time defending Division Five state champion uh, Stonebridge. And uh, you guys have been an integral part of that. You've got a dynamic team, a dynamic tailback, really good quarterback is watching you guys on film. So we'll go in order alphabetically. Mark, tell us about you know, what you attribute the success to, why you guys are doing well, and then we'll have TJ go. But Mark, shoot from the hip. Tell us, uh, you know, why Freedom is one of the best teams, if not the best team in the state of Virginia. I feel like that uh, most of us that are returning starters, we we last season it was hard. We were dominant here and there. And then we go to regionals and we lose. So I feel like the returning starters and some of the lower classmen that are starting today, this year and been playing this year, are like the main key reasons why we are such a great team because of the communication and the way we work hard and practice. Great okay. answer. Well, TJ. Oh, you know, I feel like it really all starts in practice. You know, I feel like Mark said, the people last year, you know, I felt like we're a real close knit group of guys. You know, we have each other's back, and I just feel like at practice, you know, we always give it, get it in, and we always give a hundred percent. I mean, it's crazy to say, but it almost seems like the games are easier than the practices. You know, because how much yeah, I'm part of practice, and you know, I just feel like every practice we're giving it all. Okay. Great. Hey, Mark, quick question: Last year against Battlefield, were you guys outplayed, outmuscled? What happened with Battlefield? Don't Do lead them into a dangerous question, man. I was Come careful. On. I don't think it was year. more. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> I don't think it was more like out muscle. I feel like mentally, we didn't mentally prepare ourselves for the battle and going into the game and having that bye week. We didn't take. I don't. I don't feel like we took it as serious as we're gonna take it this year. So I feel like mentally we weren't there. Physically, yeah, we we thought up we were there, but I feel like mentally we. We're at that same level. But this year, we definitely going to have it back. Okay. Go ahead, Kirk. I'm sorry to butt in. No, it's okay. <laughs> so, there, the, but Battlefield's not on the schedule. That'll be playoffs. That will yeah. be yeah. playoffs. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, man. I, I, just tell me. I, we'll get to some more fun. Let me ask you this. So, last year, you did lose to Battlefield in the regional finals. But they were a good team. Legit. Like, they were undefeated. Yep. Okay. 
And and so that's nothing to be ashamed of. But right now, you guys are undefeated. They're undefeated. You're undefeated. Patriots are undefeated. But you guys have been handling stuff. So I've seen most of your games this year, and I was live when you guys scrimmaged in Matha. Um, tell me a little bit. At what point have, did you guys realize, oh, no, we, we, we're we going to be good this year? Like, you clearly are good. You have still to finish the season. But at what point was it? Was that the math of scrimmage? Was it maybe the summer, seven on seven? Or was it after Stonebridge? At what point did you guys feel like, oh, wait a minute. This, we got something here. TJ. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, since, we, since the summer, you know, we've been a confident group. And I feel like, you know, we've been – believed in ourselves the whole way. And I feel like the Damascus scrimmage really prepared us. And I felt after that game, you know, it kind of just boosted our confidence a little more to know that, that this is serious and we could actually really make a run for it. Yeah. Okay. About you, Mark? Yeah. I, I feel like ever since the summer, 7-on-7 seven seven has been great for us. The linemen and D linemen have been putting in more work than we've ever put in, whether it's during practice or individual with the coaches. And I feel like combining that together makes us a, a phenomenal team. I'm curious, though. On a seven-on-seven, seven, what do linemen do? Oh. Uh, usually it's their support, you know, right. and our guys. Okay. <laughs> they run routes. <laughs> so it, for, for those who, who are watching this that don't know, this is they 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 scrimmage the math and the math is a, a a a power in the private schools and and normally not in this DC metro area but nationally and they were right there I mean they if you you could say they actually outplayed the math um so it was it was I don't I think the score you guys both might have scored the same amount of points but you guys really played well um but from there it, it, in case folk people don't know they beat Brook Point sixty two to three. Um, they beat a River Bend 74 zip. I was there. Uh, I was at Stonebridge 36 13. That's a two time defending champion. And they beat you last year um, in a very close game at Stonebridge. And then Unity Reed, you beat them 42 zip. And then in district play, you got a re revenge on the Garfield who had uh, beat you guys the last two years and you beat them 61 zip. So, you have really outscored your opponents. I haven't done the math, but you've got a few hundred to, the, to their uh, 16 points. What, what is wrong with your defense? What are you going to do to get better? <laughs> Mark, what can you improve on? What can you improve on defense? <laughs> I feel like the main thing that we got to improve and we're working towards during this week is communication. Communication, whether it's the call or talking it out and really – building a stronger bond with that communication. Good. Oh, you know, I feel like Mark really hit it on the head. You know, I feel like, you know, everyone, we're, like I said, we're close in that group. But I feel like, you know, it never hurts to communicate a little more, whether it's the D linemen talking to the D linemen, the linebackers echoing the calls, you know, the secondary. I just feel like us communicating more can't hurt us. And I feel like that's, you know, once we, once we start doing that more, it's going to complete that final step. I'm curious of Mark, it's Mark, Mark you first. When you play teams, is there any trash talking going on against you guys? <laughs> um, uh, a coin toss or, you know, hey, we're going to get you guys. You're overrated. We're going to – Of course. Yeah. It's football, man. It, well, man. <laughs> yeah, there is here and there. But personally, this year we've taken more control of that and we, we've kind of stepped away from that and be more professional. So when it's when it's the game plan, we in the game, we try to – We'll, we'll take a timeout and, and gather ourselves together to bring it as a team to focus that we're on the field to not only win, but do it the correct way and to succeed in that win. That's good. And TJ, anybody trash talk you? You're, you're number one, TJ, on defense. Anybody give you a hard time from the opposing team? Uh, you know, there's definitely a couple, you know, chirpy comments made, but I mean, once it gets to halftime and it's 35 nothing, <laughs> no, it's not much, you know. Another team can say that gets under your skin at that point. All right. I like okay. that. So so let me ask you this. Um, you got Forest Park coming up. And again, no, we don't need any bulletin board material, but um, you've got Forest Park and now you're into your, your district schedule. Um, now, I, I know there's no way your coaches or you guys want a loss in any way, shape or form. But 
do you think what what do you think could 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 happen if you guys get into the playoffs and have not had a close game? Do you guys do your coaches talk about that? Um, I, I'm sure even after a 74 zip uh, win, I'm sure Coach Overton and the staff find something wrong. But um, do you guys talk about being overconfident? Because uh, each week you just never know. But you know. I know I've coached uh, and I've coached two undefeated teams in youth and middle school. Uh, the, that Benton team, we went undefeated a few years ago. And man, I was just like, I, the last time I want to lose, the place I want to lose is in this championship. But but what are you guys doing as leaders on the team to make sure you guys are going to be able to stay focused? Uh, do, do, you, do, you, do you think uh, blowing all these teams out uh, is good? Or do you see any value in having tougher games? TJ. Oh, uh, you know, I definitely feel, you know, there's, there's some people might think, you know, win all these games, you know, we don't know how to fight back if we're down. But I feel like, you know, we've been working for this, you know, this is what we're, we're ready for. So, I mean, I don't have, I don't see us having any issue, you know, say we were to go down, you know, in a big regional game, state game. You know, I feel like um, the coaches and the players we have on our team that we're ready for this and, you know, I, just, I got faith in my guys to know that, say we go down 7 nothing, 14 nothing, that we're going to treat it like a zero zero and we're going to keep on battling. Tell me a little bit more about you growing up. Are you guys both uh, – did you grow up in, in Prince William County? Or, or did you get here later? Were you military? But 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 tell me, where, where how long you, you've been around this area and um, when did you start playing sports? Mark. Uh, oh, yeah, Mark, you got it. Well, I'm not originally from here. I'm originally from New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah I've been playing football since I was five so like this is like mainly the only sport I really like deeply have focused and, and love for because not only does it prepare me in life but it also prepares me as a, as a young man and the achievements that I can achieve through football so I feel like football is a like big part of my life and my family oh, and cool. Mark, yeah. when you to Virginia I moved to Virginia like I think two years ago, because the the competitive sport that Virginia brings yeah. and the coaching was much different, and I feel like that's what I needed to build on my craft and to be a better player moving forward into college. Right, good choice, good uh, move. What about you, TJ? Uh, you know, I've lived in uh, Woodbridge, Prince County, my whole life. Um, you know, I've been playing football like Mark since I was five, but I first started playing soccer when I was like three or four. You know, I was just Okay. Wow. Yeah, I was a just a crazy kid, ready to you know get to any sport he could. But then uh, kind of start playing football when I was five. You know, baseball. You know, basketball. Growing up, but once I kind of hit high school, you know, I kind of stuck out with football, and you know, it's been great ever since. Now, did your dad coach you when you were younger? Your father? Oh uh, yeah, my dad did coach me uh, for the uh, Bengals AYF. Uh, we he actually coached with uh, Tony Keeling, the Garfield coach. So, you know, I've oh yeah. I've known Coach Tony and all his staff for a while. Um, and it was just a – man, I know a lot of those kids. It was just great overall, you know, playing for my dad. Uh, we always had a close bond, and it meant a lot to me, you know, playing for, playing for him. Now, is he hard? Was it hard on you, or was it easy? Or how uh, you know, my, my dad was definitely uh, hard on me, but, you know, he tried to – he never tried to, like, just coach me. You know, he tried to let the other coaches coach me, you know. Um, he didn't want to be, like, one of those dads that was always, you know, crazy on his son. So, I mean, I felt he did a great job with that, you know, with uh, letting me – he used to being coached by other coaches because that's how it's going to be, you know, once you reach the next level. That's true. I, yeah, I, co I coach. Go ahead, Rossi. My bad. No, I'm sorry, I coached Justin for years, and most of the time he never wanted to hear what I had to say. But all I had to do was tell another coach exactly what I wanted him to do. And if I said it, he wouldn't do it. But if the other coach said it, he'd be like, okay, yes, sir, and go do it. I'm like, come on, dog. <laughs> One of the things I did want to cover before we go in, and we have a lot of fun with, um, you know, just personal questions that have nothing to do with sports, but kind of highlight your offense because you guys have a great offense. You've got a really talented um, tailback and a great quarterback. I was watching them on film. So, uh, TJ, why don't you tell us a little bit about a, a very dynamic uh, Freedom Woodbridge office? I uh, mean, I can't say enough about our offense. You know I mean? We, a lot of them are returner guys. You know, all of our receivers are returning, you know. Jeff was returning, you know, and Tristan, he started for, he got a lot of burn freshman year when Davis got hurt, and he's finally, it's finally his time now. I mean, I just, I mean, those guys light it up on the scoreboard, you know. I mean, every day I practice watching them, the stuff they do, you know, the plays they make, it's, I mean, some of the times I'm like, no way he just made that. So, I mean, can't say enough about them, and I mean, it reflects on Friday nights when they light it up. 
Yeah, uh, does Tristan does Tristan buy you lunch for blocking, man? <laughs> I wish, but not so that's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. I would say like the big key of our offense lately has been the uh, offensive line with Armand, Adrian, Juju, Walter, like and Jonah, like they've been so dominant. Yes. A couple of them are younger, a couple of them are seniors, but I feel like their bond is so well and, and so strong for the past, like, two to three years that when they step on the field, they know what they got to do. They help each other out, calling out who's coming, what's the blitz coming looking like. And I feel like that is what makes our offense one of the best offense in the state because communication is, is phenomenal. And it gives the time for the to follow yeah, that's that's a good point. You're on. You had a great line called the Trench Mob, right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, Trench Mob. So yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this: So th those are favorite uh, athletes, and they are some great ones. Um, is there anybody you've tried to um, model your particular game after? I, you know, I, I personally, growing up, my favorite player was Walter Payton, and so I wanted to run hard like he did. You know, high step, even block. Um, cause he, he was just that much of an influence on me or, or like when I played basketball now I wasn't six, nine, like magic, but I wanted to play point guard, like magic Johnson, <laughs> you know, it, 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 anybody you try to emulate in your play. Uh, I don't know if I really say uh, emulate, but uh, I definitely say, you know, I like, like to watch a lot of film from, you know, guys in college and the NFL and just like take pieces of their game, whether it's pass rush moves, you know, the way they set up, you know. Mm -hmm. I watched a lot of Von Miller about his, you know, just getting off of the ball, you know, following the ball. And I just mean, yeah, I can't sense enough about it. Cool. cool. And Mark? Uh, I would say Aaron Donald because not only is he an undersized lineman, but with the power that he has and what he's been growing in the lab, in the weight room, he does phenomenal moves and techniques that I've tried to build upon and – to create while in the game or at least try to to build my craft the way he has built his and his legacy. How much do you weigh? Uh, right now I'm pushing 275, almost 280. Woo, good job. How yeah. tall are you? Are you six? Six, two? One. six one, okay. Yeah. Well, you how much do you weigh, TJ? Uh, I'm about like uh, 260 and I'm 6'3". Woo, trench mob is getting big. Golly, <laughs> man. All right. Good job. Ooh, cool. So, guys, you, you know, where, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? What, what ideally, what, if you could say, hey, 10 years from now when I'm 28, what, what would you like to see yourself? Uh, you know, for me, I just, I uh, uh, mean, hopefully, you know, graduated from college, you know, uh, you know, I mean, everyone wants to make NFL. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, I can see myself there, you know, uh, starting a family, you know, and just being able to give back to my community, you know, give back to the people who, Help me get to where I am at that point and just, you know, let everybody know that you can make it, you know. Get from where Bridge made it, so can you. Would you coach? Yeah. Didn't they, would you coach football in your 30s or 40s? Oh, uh, you know, I definitely would like to coach football. You know what I mean? Since it's something that's been in my life since I was little, you know, I definitely mean a lot to, you know, give back and show the kids, you know, teach them and just let them know that the great things that can lead to football, you know, the connections you make. I mean, these are lifelong friends you have. And then, yeah. Okay. And Mark? Um, I probably would say still be in the business field, but also a mentor to young athletes and, and kids that have been in my footsteps or, or going in my footsteps to show that you could be from a small town and not a lot of good background, but you can make it out and you can go places that are bigger than yourself that will, will make you have bigger achievements that you ever imagined. <laughs> All right, so look, I got uh, so guys, look, we, we've talked enough football. Let's let's find out a little bit more of people, a little bit more about what you you guys like to do and, and what you're into. So, all right, what what do you like to do outside of football? But or you know, I know for me, I like to watch movies and and and, and uh, you know, I'm I'm now into all since COVID and I got stuck in the house for two years. Uh, I stream a lot of stuff. What is what do you like to do outside of football? Teacher, uh, uh, for me, it's definitely. I mean. It's Kind of related to football, but you know, I'm a lot of working out, you know, training, but you know, away from football and everything, you know, I like to just relax at home, you know, watch some uh, movies, any genre really, 
and just hang out with my friends and family, you know, just kick back and get away from football for a little bit and just, you know, relax. Do okay. you have a favorite movie of all time? Uh, definitely have to be Remember the Titans. That's oh, mine. Uh, yeah. Oh. I like that. That's mine. I love that. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Bart? Um, I'm kind of the same with TJ. I like to work out. That's like my main thing I like to do on the weekends and free time. But I also like to get back to the youth, like help out with like PME sometimes and show them some techniques that I've learned and that helps me in my game plan. And last, I say spend time with family. Do you guys exercise? Do you go to Gold's Gym or at Freedom? Where do you work out at? Uh, in the off season and starting still now, I go to uh, I train at C four in uh, Manassas. That's where I train at. That's good. You lift there because a lot of training places don't have a full weight room. Yeah, we have there's a weight room and there's okay. a, a turf area too. All right. And Mark, Mark, did we get a? Did you say a favorite movie, or do we give you the chance? Yet? No. Uh, I don't really know. I don't really have a favorite movie. I kind of like them all. You like the Marvel comics, though, right? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> all right. That's cool. All right, guys. So, look, let me ask you this. Um, if if you were to, and again, this is not now, but I'll say you're, you know, in that t 10 years later, let's say you're, you're, you're 30 years old. And you were given five billion dollars, okay? Billion, not five thousand, not five million, but five billion. With a B. Um, mm -hmm. With a B. What What do you think you would do with some of that money, TJ? That's a lot of money, but I definitely, you know, the first thing I'd do, I feel like I would, you know, buy a house for you know my parents and uh, myself, and then next probably a car, and then you know you still have billions and billions left over. I definitely feel like I would, you know, donate some money and just give back to. Uh, communities and just uh uh foundations and stuff like that okay cool mark and we're gonna get about fun stuff too though go ahead mark um personally i would make sure that my mom's set she's done a lot for me she's my biggest inspiration so i feel like as long as she's set, i'm gonna be happy no matter what and whatever is left i pretty much would give it to charities around woodbridge that have helped me and my family in crisis that I've gone through. So I feel like that's, that's like the biggest thing I'll do. No car? What about you? A, a Bugatti or a, a Bentley? Well, or... that's what I was going to get into. Okay, so $5 billion is not $5 million. All right, so you could be very generous, start some foundations, make a really big difference in the world, you know, with on a mass level. But that also gives you enough money to not be tacky and get some tricks and stuff. So you're talking about, you know, um, cars, houses, things like that. So, TJ, you're going to have to, you know, live a little. So, let's just say you can get two cars and a vacation home. What would your two cars be? One of my cars definitely would have to be a Hellcat. You know, I'm a big Challenger guy. Mm -hmm. I'd have to be a Hellcat. Then I feel like another car would have to be some type of, you know, souped up type of truck, whether it's a Jeep, you know, Ford, <laughs> some type of, you know, big body vehicle. Yeah. In a vacation spot. You know, I feel like everyone. Rolling beach. <laughs> like, no, everyone says somewhere in the States, and I feel like I'd have to go somewhere. I feel like a, a place in Jamaica or somewhere like that. Oh. Yeah, that's a good call. You don't want to make yeah. it. Too All right, Mark. What you, well, let's, let's have some fun, man. Are you going to get a yacht? You're going to get, you know, uh, is it going to be a uh, McLaren? <laughs> um personally i'd probably get an all blackout tesla because i like i like teslas how they look they look pretty good um i'm pretty sure i think like the tesla and a truck because i gotta have the leg space and i probably would get a house in panama city because it's a beautiful city and I really like oh panama city u.s or panama city panama panama city panama okay, okay. oh okay yeah yeah, that's a big city, man. Real big. Jay, Jay, what would you do with $5 billion? Ooh. I would first buy me a Bentley. A Bentley? Yeah. That's an old man's car, man. They got a good <laughs> shit running the road. They got a Bentley. buy a big house so, in McLean. Kurt, he's an old man. I mean, he said he's an old man's car, so he's an old man. <laughs> I know. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll buy a um, house. I'm joking. You buy a house in Gray Falls. McCle- yeah, Gray Falls. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Rusty. All right. So, yeah, y'all think too small for me. First off, I'm <laughs> going to buy the Commanders. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they probably go for about $3 billion. So I think they go uh, more than that, Rusty. Well, maybe yeah. they probably would, but right now, if he gets forced to sell, he may. Not, I may be able to get him on the cheap. Uh, or buy. I'll go buy this. I'll buy the Suns for two billion, uh, and uh, I would build a great stadium around here that would be better than the one in Vegas, better than um, what is the SoFi, better than Dallas. It, we'd have a sweet stadium somewhere in Virginia. Um, and we'd, we'd uh, host a lot of great events in my stadium. Um, and oh. then I would, uh, you know, just make sure that uh, a lot of charities are taken care of. My family all has jobs working for some of my, my uh, businesses. And um, yeah, that, that's the type of thing I would do. No, my, fa- my family, look. Bro, they, I didn't say what they would do, and I didn't say okay. how much they would make. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Kirk? Well, after taxes, it's probably going to be about two point five billion. Um, <laughs> so, you know, or protect it. But think about that much money. I, I don't think you understand. The rich don't get taxed the same way. They'll, you know, you, you, with all that money, you'll get an accountant that can find all exactly. the codes you need. Right. So uh, I would say, first of all, the thing rich people do that you know almost everybody else doesn't do is fly. I would get me a nice, sweet jet, be going to these airports where they pick you right up and things like that. Because I just you know flew from San Diego to here and getting herded in and out like animals and being a bigger guy is not fun. So I do the plane. I think I would not have more than a couple of places to live. So I'd like to live in Gray Falls. I think Gray Falls is absolutely beautiful. And I'd like to live around here. And then probably a nice place, St. John's, my favorite. And then um, I'm not a big car guy. Probably get a Tesla Model S. Um, you know the model. <laughs> yeah, Model S probably by 90 or 100, something like that. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I believe more in spending money on experience, you know? So I'd, I'd like a yeah. sweet. At the Caps and Wizards, I'm not a big Wizards fan, but, uh, you know, just um, go to the Super Bowl every year, go, um, you know, go to the NCAA Final Four, you know, take some people uh, that maybe normally couldn't go, uh, those type of things. And, um, yeah, I mean, like Shaquille O'Neal, invest in things that you believe in and put your money into. So, you know, you can invest in very good conscious things. But uh, getting back to you guys um, any reality TV? Not a big reality TV guy. No? Okay. What about you, Mark? No. I really uh, ever watch TV, so. No 90 Day Fiance or Say Yes to the Dress? <laughs> I watched it with my sisters, man. It's not bad. It kind of sucks you in. Put the 90 Day Fiance. What's that? Oh, oh. What's that? 90 Day what? 90 Little day. Day? It's pretty entertaining. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, wrap it up but our last two questions are do you have a favorite type of music genre music or a particular artist that you like and then the last one also is it, going to be if you could have the phone number of anybody that's currently alive and you guys were just boys but you could be around them a lot but you could text them anytime and they would hit you right back anybody in the world who, who would it be? So first, um, you, music, and then tell me about if you could text uh, and be friends with somebody. I'm a big uh, rap guy, you know, I mean, every day on game day, got my headphones in, listening to some rap, preferably uh, some little baby, and then regarding the phone number, it definitely have to be LeBron. You know, I feel like... LeBron, the way, yeah. The way he's been able to market himself since he came into the league at 18, I definitely feel like he could, you know, give me some tips and help me along the way, especially with NIL. And definitely wouldn't hurt. That's true. Yep. That's, yep. True. That's good. Really good. What about you, Mark? I'm a I'm a R and B. I like to have a little soul music in me too sometimes. And I would say I would want to talk to Tom Brady. He's oh. been through oh. 
won a lot. He knows what being under pressure is, and he's done a lot and achieved a lot at the age he's at. So I feel like he'd be like the best mentor I, I'd want to keep in my phone. I have one question before we go. Okay, Mark, you've been on the road, you played at Freedom. Who has the best pregame music from uh, Freedom? Or oh, man. You know he's not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um personally i would say freedom because pregame is 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 crazy but it's the after game when we all while taking the w or even if it's a loss like the pregame pregame and after game music is, is oh it's a little crazy thank you i what i wonder who plays the music at those games <laughs> hmm. who could that be freedom has been great to us coach daryl overton He's been on the show, and then I got to um, interview him after uh, uh, one of your games this year. Oh, but I just want to let you guys, yeah, you no. guys, uh, yeah, you you guys are, 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 are a great group of uh, young athletes. I know, uh, you know, TJ personally, and he's always uh -huh. been very respectful. I, I tell you, I, I judge a lot of kids by little things they do. Doesn't mean they aren't other kids or bad kids, but like I have some kids I've coached over the years, and the kids that'll go out of their way to say hi. But TJ, from the time I've met him, I don't care where I am, TJ can be, we can be at a basketball or football game, and he will come up and say hi, shake my hand, and look me in the eye. And, and that goes a long way, man. I really appreciate that, TJ, but that shows me, you know, how you've been raised. And so that, that I'm just letting you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing because, you you know, some kids, you know, they don't carry themselves that way, especially when they're a big big football star. So um, yeah. that, that that's very impressive. But your school overall, uh, I love your program. And, and we're going we're gonna to put it out there. You know, we, we've we had other athletes on and we, we've kind of got a challenge. We had one with the coaches. How many views is this going to get? Do you guys have any game any cachet? I'm like, if you tweak this, TJ, <laughs> are people going to watch it? So <laughs> I, I will say this. I won't say other shameless, schools, but we've had We've had athletes from we've had volleyball, we've had we've had crew, we've had oh, yeah. other football, basketball, we've had all type. We had uh, Bryce Duke uh, last year, the All Man Player of the Year, and he's close to a thousand uh, views. But what can you guys? We had Stonebridge athletes last year. Uh, let's see what the Freedom Community can do, and if they will support you guys. One by getting you the most views, and two by subscribing. Kirk and Butter has the goal of trying to get a thousand subscribers by the end of October. And 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 I'll tell you, the, the more that that people from your community support you, the more we talk about you. And that's what we've been saying. Look, we talk about Kogan, we talk about Battlefield, Patriot, Freedom, and Forest Park because they they they're they're supporting us. They are Kirkenberg supporters. So let's see. Let's we're gonna to try to get more Potomac yep. athletes out here. We're gonna get what what Woodbridge, Hilton, but let's just see how the Freedom Community can support Mark Arena and T.J. Bush and all those great athletes. All right, yeah. we got you. We got, yeah. Uh, the one thing I was going to point out, and this is for everybody, is we're doing a weekly review of Prince William County. Where can you get that from? So, and we're, we're going to have Jay and other people on. So, for the players and for the people, the parents and you know the coaches and all that. Um, those are getting a little bit shorter, but we're going into each game and things like that. And you really can't get that anywhere else. You just get some piecemeal. So, you know, we want to, we don't want to just people to just watch for watching. We want you to come back because we believe we're delivering some content that not that many other people have. So, and we have a lot of fun doing this also. So we really appreciate you guys coming on. Jay, thank you. Regular. Yep. Jay's the man that goes to other parts of the state and stirs up stuff every day. So Stir it pot. right. So <laughs> in November, you may not want to say you're friends with Jay, but uh Freedom will go all the way here. Goes in. Right. And for the Prince Rusty, for the Prince William County people, I'm calling it like this and don't jump on me. But I think that they will play the the winner in the playoffs of Battlefield and Patriot. That's because that's the two and three seeds, whichever way that goes. So, no, but you don't know. But you don't even know. We don't know. They could be the two seed. It, no, you know how the, the, no, no. Listen, I think they're going to be the number one seed. This, how, listen, by the end of the year, by the points, 
if Patriot or Battlefield is undefeated and they're undefeated, it goes by strength of schedule and your opponent's wins and losses. Doesn't mean they're not a good team. Nobody, it's not like there's no BCS committee saying they should be one, somebody else be two. So they could be the two seed, but it you just we don't know. You right. keep doing your part and then everything will work out the way it's supposed to. All right. So when you're the number one seed, um in the third game. We're looking forward to you facing Patriot or Battlefield. That's going to be fun. And then beyond there, things are going to get, you know, very interesting. It's going to be exciting to watch. And, you know, the November is going to be a fun month. And, uh, you know, seeing games down there, I know the environment's great. So really looking forward to it. It's fun talking hey, to you. Hey, yeah, appreciate you, you guys it. have been great. Thanks a bunch. Um, you guys keep working hard. And we, we will be following those Freedom Woodridge Eagles. This has been the Kirkenberg Show. We are out. We're out.